Okay, continuing our theme of dynamic clouds and soaring flight. Once you have picked the sketch that you want to build up on, I showed you in the last demo how we brought that sketch into Adobe Illustrator. We put it on its on a layer and then we dimmed it with the transparency window. I'll unlock it so you can see that. We dimmed it to 50%. This is called onion skinning. And why that matters, see 50% right there under transparency. It matters so when we build up shapes on top of it, on additional layers, vector paths, that we can see them clearly. Doesn't mean we can't improve upon our sketch, but it helps us use our sketch as a guide as a guideline throughout. So, whenever you need a tool and you don't see it, a window, just look under windows. We're gonna be using several of these. And then when I am done with a layer, I click the padlock property that's right next to the eyeball. So I'm gonna lock my sketch. I then showed you how to use shapes, much like we did exercise two. I'll build another shape in there right now. So unlock it. And I can add in, let's see, a square here. And I can show you a nice principle within Illustrator here. Even though I brought a square, if I use the, the small selection tool, you'll see whenever you get hard edges like this, any of these anchors can be converted to curves. But if I just use what's called the rounding corner tool, I can change a corner into a round. And it will evenly do it on both sides by creating two anchor points out of the one. So that's a new functionality within Illustrator, which is pretty helpful. It can help you make more versatile shapes. You know, like so. And then if you use the large selection tool, you can of course rotate and scale those shapes and distort them. If you don't want them to distort as you stretch them, you can hold down shift and then they'll lock their proportions. So even though I started with the rectangle tool, I was able to get something that was more like an ellipse. And I'll be showing you later how we can cut shapes out as well. So right now I'm just kind of blocking with solid shapes here, my sketch, but then obviously some shapes need to be cut out. And I will show you quickly how you can do that. So let's go to the shape tool again, and let's use the polygon tool, just like we, we've done in Photo P before for exercise two. So with the polygon tool, I can make something like this, Let's see, and how do I make it so it's fewer points? Instead of choosing a triangle or something, what I do is I simply use the pen tool and then click on the points I don't want. And I can change it to a triangle or something else, right? So now that I have that shape tool, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that with white just so we can see it clearly using the fill color and going to white. In fact, actually, let me make it red just so it's a little bit easier to see. So this is all under my shapes layer. I now have this hard edge polygon on top. And because this needs to be like the head of my dove in my sketch, not of my dove, of my, my bird, right? How can I cut that red shape out from the black shape. I don't want you to use white shapes because this needs to be a, a black shape logo. So using white shapes on top of it is adding another color fill and we don't want that. Instead, we want a black cutout. So what I do is I now select all of my shapes and I'm gonna use a new window tool called Pathfinder, which is incredibly important and something that really separates 
casual users from professional users. Pathfinder allows you to merge paths together. So if I do that, everything will become one solid path. And it's going to take the color attribute of what's on top. So it changes everything to red and it merges it all together. Gives you a complex path shape instead of just a bunch of overlapping um, ellipses. Then there is the subtract tool or the minus tool, which will subtract from the one I've talked about, but I don't want to subtract everything, right? I just want to subtract this one from this one. So what I need to do is carefully select just those two paths that are intersecting. So these two, and then if I do the minus tool, it will cut that chunk out of it. Same thing if I want a perfect circle for my moon, I can hold down shift and get a perfect circle for my ellipse tool, right? And then even if it's black, I can select that path and then the path underneath it and then use the pathfinder to minus one shape from the other. So I'm getting close. And now if I select all of them and then I use the pathfinder tool to merge them, you can see how I'm using just the shape tools to get close to my, my logo, right? Though I'm not there yet. The pen tool is something I showed you last class in Illustrator. I'll show you the free form pen tool to add to that. Notice how it's giving me a, a can't do it sign. And that's because I need to have it selected. So now I have every other layer locked. I'll lock and collapse them. Now I'm on the pin tool and I'm selecting the path that I've started. And I'm going to add with the freeform pin tool a new one. And with this, I'm just plotting a lot of points. And you're going to see it starts to curve with me a little bit. But I just prefer the pencil tool to this. But you're definitely welcome to play with the freeform pen tool. And then I need to click where I began to close the path. So you see the freeform, it, it creates a lot of redundancy a lot of extra anchor points. Whereas the original pin tool is all about really refining your anchor points and then converting them. And there are the helpful tips in knowing how to convert straights to curves like I'm doing here, how to hold down different keys using the pin tool, like holding down command so you can get to the direct selection tool and move anchors around, move handles. That's command option to change a straight into a curve or change a curve back into a straight by clicking and dragging. And so the pin tool gives you a lot more control. The freeform pin tool kind of approximates the curves and can get you close, but does not give you minimum anchor points. But my favorite tool, of course, as I went over last class, is not the pen tool, not the freeform pen tool, but the pencil tool, which you'll find at the bottom of the brush cabinet, because you can set it to be fairly smooth by double clicking on the tool. And then you can redraw like magic scissors cutting out this paper. And see how that, because I have smooth turned on, it simplifies the anchor points. This is not a pen tool, this is the pencil tool, which I find incredibly helpful. All right. Now the pencil tool is sadly not available in our freeware version of Illustrator, which is called vector.com. So I'm going to save my progress here and I'm going to repeat the steps I've done so far. 
in vector.com. Show you how you can use shapes, show you how you can use the pin tool. So as that's saving, I'm going to go to vector.com. I'm going to move it so that you don't have to look at ads. And you can log in if you like. I am not logged in. I'm just a guest right now. And what can be really helpful are is this information button, this help button. But they have just redesigned it. So you see all of the shortcuts here for different functionality. The first thing I want to be able to do is to import an image, to upload an image, my sketch. So I'm going to create new, and I've created new. This is called the artboard. And I want to upload an image. You have to log in to save your changes. You can just log in with a uh, an email address. And I'm just going to look on my desktop. Vector.com does seem to be running pretty slow. <laughs> so I'm glad we have Illustrator to use. But this is a freeware alternative. And they do have, or they have had in the past, some tutorials to help. I don't know if they've added those yet to their new design, but you can see those in our Canvas course. There are slides about how to use Vector.com to create your logo, created by a past honor student. Yeah, because this is real slow. Just to upload my sketch. Should you do, but we'll get there. All right, and we're going to go to assignment six, and I'm going to upload my sketch, my cleaned up sketch, the one I want to use. Just like I had brought it into Illustrator before. And there are layers in Vector just like there are in Illustrator. I'll open those up. This sketch is going to be the bottom layer. Where is it, though? There it is. So notice that you can have things that go beyond the artboard. That's fine. And this is a, pix a pixelated image, right? This is a raster image. And you can see the pixels when I zoom in. So this is just a guideline. I'm going to go ahead and take its opacity. You can see its attribute in the right hand there down to 50%. That's called onion skinning. And then I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to click the padlock. Just like in Illustrator, you can turn things off with the eye and you can lock things. Now I'm going to use shape tools just like I did in Illustrator. And I'm going to build a shape using the shape tools. And I have to choose a shape first. I'll use the ellipse. And I can stretch it. And I can rotate it. And I can grow it. And then notice that it has attributes just like an Illustrator file does. It has a fill and it has a border. Uh, in Illustrator, they call the border or the outline, they call it the stroke. What I want to do is make the border size zero so that there is no stroke. And I want to make the fill black. So I'm just going to choose black from the color options. All right. Then the next shape I do, let's make it a polygon shape. Might have different attributes. This one's pale purple. So it's just reminding you, every time you do a new path, 
it always has the option for these two attributes.